Hello everyone, I am Erica of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching Coffee Time with Erica. Today I have a very sad empty coffee cup already as I had my cappuccino about half an hour ago. I'm sorry, it was just too yummy and I couldn't wait. However, besides my sad coffee cup, I have a cheerful, very kind guest with us today, Heather Kingsley Heap who is the creator and inventor of the Albion Stitch, one of the new beading stitches. You can watch today's Coffee Time with Erica from the Beading School Club and also from the Beading School Facebook page. And I already see some of our ladies saying, hi, Sandra is here and Jessica and Faye, Annie, Katja. Can you let me know, ladies, if you can hear me and you can see me to make sure that everything works fine? And then I can't wait to invite Heather to join us and to tell us all about the Albion Stitch. Kathy is here and Honey, Martine, Lutka, a Facebook user friend, Kata. Okay, Sandra is saying that she can see me and hear me. Tanya, our New Zealand gang is growing. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So I would like to now invite Heather Kingsley Heath to join me. She will be here in a few seconds. Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for Hi. accepting my invitation. No, it's lovely to be here with everyone. <laughs> I am really, really happy that you that you decided to join me. And before we would start, I also would like to thank you for your time, uh, for being one of our jury members during the Beading School competition in the summer. Oh, that was so much fun. It was really lovely seeing all the beadwork. It was mm -hmm. great. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I think we have an amazingly creative gang here. And actually, most of the beaders who are watching now, they were participating in the competition. So okay. Special. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Heather is a beadwork designer and teacher from the United Kingdom, and she is the creator of Albion Stitch. And today, we, uh, she will introduce us the Albion Stitch, show us uh, some jewels, she will tell us what is possible, we will also talk about her newest project, there are some very, very fun ones, bead beings, and uh, at the end, you will be able to ask some questions, if you, uh, I'm sure that you would like to get to know Heather even better. But to start, I have some questions for you for an untraditional introduction. I will, I will okay. ask you six of your favorites, six uh, things. What are your favorites in life? Three not bead related and three breed related. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the not bead related things. What is your favorite drink? Tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're English after all, yeah. so that's not a terribly good <laughs> <Yeah>. surprise. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of tea are you drinking today? I'm drinking English breakfast tea. Nice. With milk? Yes. Enjoy. <laughs> 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 then, my second question, do you have a place on earth, wherever, in England or from a holiday that, that is somehow special to you? It is your favorite where you have been to? Yeah, it's uh, the Maldives Islands. Oh, wow. Nice and warm. Yeah. Nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> Were you there for a holiday or even maybe teaching beadwork? <laughs> oh, I wish I could go there and teach beadwork. Um, no, we went there for our honeymoon and we stayed for nearly three weeks and oh, wow. it was heaven. 
just beautiful. Can imagine. And imagine a bidding retreat under the palm trees. Oh, fabulous. <gasps> I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> One day. <laughs> and as the, well, the holiday season is coming, and my third question about your favorites is, what is your favorite holiday? And do you my like Christmas? Holiday. Um, let me think. Um, no, my favorite holiday is the what we have here, the May Bank holiday. It's the first of weekend of May, mm -hmm. and it's the first proper break that we get since Christmas. Okay. And the weather's usually nice. <laughs> And that's something to cherish. Yeah. <laughs> so those were my not bead related questions about your favorites. And then I have three bead related ones. All right. Do you have a favorite bead shape? Yeah, the humble seed bead. I was just thinking that I see you working a lot with seed beads, but not much else like no, I, use, um, I have used shape beads mm -hmm. and I decided fairly early on because we, we just got loads and loads coming in and I decided fairly early on that if they worked with my seed beads then I'd mm -hmm. use them so I use the little super eights the, yeah. the like the mini super duos I like the little triangles with two holes the um, Cheops. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly um and the the little tile beads and the ruler beads mm -hmm. but i haven't kind of gone all out for all the amazing new shapes that keep arriving yeah there They've are got to work first yeah yeah <laughs> there are so many of them nowadays. yeah 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 and do you have a favorite color or uh, color scheme color combination turquoise and green Oh, oh my God, Heather, you are in such a good gang. <laughs> How many turquoise lovers do we have here? Like, hands up, ladies. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> but isn't it like a great color? Like, turquoise goes so well with like everything. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, oh, it's, it's just... Your loving turquoise just made me smile even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we have, yeah, Kata, Miriam, Tanya, everyone here is like, yeah, me, me, me. <laughs> so. And can I just say a big hello back to everyone who's saying hello, Heather? I can see oh. all your comments. So, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, at the moment, 60 beaders watching from all around the globe. Cool. And we even have some friends here from New Zealand. So that means 5 a.m. in the morning. <gasps> I'm honored. To... Thank you for getting up so early. <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> it, total. Bead love. <laughs> and after your favorite bead shape and color. What about stitches? Is your favorite stitch Albion stitch or do you like to play uh, also with other ones? <laughs> yeah, of course, it's very close to my heart, but I like mixing lots of different stitches together. So I I don't have just one default one. I, I Like, you know, you can put right angle weave with Albion stitch. You can... I, I like the way that you can shape things by using several different techniques in one piece. So I don't have an all time favorite, but I am very dedicated to Albion Stitch. <laughs> I have to be. <laughs> well, after three books and developing a whole stitch, which makes possible, uh, makes it possible to bead 3D objects and bezel and spirals and all kinds of uh, critters, then yeah 
I don't wonder that you are immersed in it. And for those of uh, those of our bidders who are not familiar yet with Albion Stitch, can you tell us, please, about Albion Stitch? Yeah. So Albion Stitch is a way of using picots, and a picot is any number of stitches with one or more at the top. And then you go back through the stalk beads, the any number of stitches. And it came about because I was um, in a little group of bead teachers here in the UK. And we used to meet three or four times a year and just shoot ideas around. And they said, hey, you know, we ought to come up with something new. So I said, OK, then we'll, we'll give it a go. And I've been making... Um, a brick stitch bowl, the original bowls. There they are on screen. And I got bored. <laughs> if anybody's made a big thing out of brick stitch, it, it takes a while. So I cheated and I made these little stalks with two beads at the top. And then I could carry on doing my brick stitch. So when we had that chat, I decided that the fun thing to do would be to take that idea and take it for a walk. So those ripple wave cuffs that you can see um, were the next step because quite quickly I could see you could build a basic fabric but then you could build off the surface in the same way that you can say with right angle weave and from there it just grew and grew so I had a little bead group of girls we used to meet every Thursday so I swore them all to secrecy and I gave them the basics of the stitch. I said, just tell me what you think, absolute honest opinion. And I was just amazed at how quickly they picked it up and how quickly they started playing with different bead sizes, shapes. Um, they were throwing crystals into the mix. And I thought, wow, this is really good for beginners because... You don't have to learn any rules. Once you've learned that basic stitch, you can make them longer or shorter, or you can put more beads in between or less beads in between. So it was kind of, they were naturally playing in a way that I hadn't seen when I was teaching other mm -hmm. stitch techniques. So then I went away and thought, well, if we're going to develop this, it has to be able to do all the things that any other stitch could do. So as you said in the intro, it had to be able to work flat, circular, tubular, um, spirals. So that's how the first book came about. So I was just thinking, well, you know, each stage will put it together. And then I couldn't get anybody interested in the book at all in the publishing world. Um, they, so I got my credit card and I went to the printer <laughs> and said, I, I need to print this book and I paid for it on my credit card and I was terrified because I'd never spent so much money with without a means of paying it back but um so then I went on the road with the book I went to all the bead shows and groups and just taught as many classes as I could just to get the word out there um, Heather, sorry, yeah. just to, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Just I wanted to say that thank you so much for making that brave decision. Oh, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, it, it it took me about a year to pay it all off, but it 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 was definitely worth it. But I realised that I'd only told half the story, and like with all these things um this might be useful to everyone because it took me another another year of work to to bring out the second book because i wanted it to do more and i really wanted to push it so i wanted to make bezels yeah. i wanted to be able to draw with beads and make 3d shapes and with these processes you get so far and then you hit a brick wall and then you just have to walk away and leave it and let your brain kind of mash everything up. And then you'll get up one morning and go, oh, of course, it's so obvious. <laughs> but that doesn't happen in a flow. You know, it, it happens in stops and starts. So um, book two came along. But one of the funny things was in book one, I also wanted to incorporate that um, 
in nearly every bead class I teach, people ask me about colour. So the introduction to each chapter was a colour story and then all the pieces in the chapter were done in those colours to, to kind of just describe how you can mix and match colours. And of course, book one used all my favourite colour combinations. <laughs> so, and I couldn't use them over again in book two. So then I had to, to make myself use colours that, I mean, up until that point, I didn't possess a purple bead. I just didn't own one, but I had a whole purple chapter in there. <laughs> And now I'm okay with purple. <laughs> That's so funny. And as I bring back, I brought back the cover of the first book. Now it's really clear that turquoise and green are yeah, your favorites. Exactly. We have a yeah. proof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I've, uh, I will post now the link to your page for our ladies here so they can check out your page and find the books because i'm sure that we have readers here getting intrigued about the possibilities and so you had indeed like a wow moment when you realized that this is going to be big and it's worth to explore yeah Definitely. Yeah. And um, the thing that I liked most was getting to a point with, with the stitch where I, I could think of an idea and then just do it in beads. And like a really cute example is the cute bird that everybody's making at the moment. Um, that's just like the 3D, the simplest use of the stitch in 3D. But straight away, you can you can start to make things look like other things, like butterflies, bees, you know, all sorts of different creatures. Um, and I did for the, I think it was 2012 um, challenge, the um, Beadsmiths mm -hmm. challenge. Um, I got invited to participate and I thought, God, you know, all these girls, they're making these amazing huge collars and all this gorgeous work. And, you know, I don't, I don't really do big. <laughs> so, and I was having coffee with a friend and she said, well, don't do big, do ugly. <laughs> she said, what's the ugliest thing you can think of? And I said, well, insects and bugs. And she said, right, off you go then do a scorpion. So um, the little scorpion, was my submission and I got I, I think I got to about the third or fourth round I can't remember but I was actually knocked out by the eventual winner and, oh, wow. and rightly so her piece was gorgeous um but the scorpion is all done in a combination of albin stitch and herringbone stitch for his legs I have um, to admit that I remember the scorpion. I totally, yeah. totally remember this this picture that you shared with me last week, but I didn't put it somehow together that it was yours. And oh, I was okay. super surprised to hear and to realize that it is done with Albion stitch. Yeah. yeah. There are really so many. And everything moves. He's all on wire, so everything moves. And he's about, if you... He was a brooch, so he'd he'd fit about that long. He's big. He's quite big. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, he kind of went on a world tour without me, and he went over to to Germany and and other countries in Europe. And um, I eventually kind of caught up with him in in Germany. And I was at a show, and um, I don't know if you know, there's an amazing bead lady called um, Zoya Gutin. Yes. She's Russian. She's a lovely lady. And her husband came up to me and he couldn't speak any English, but he just pointed at me and went, Scorpion woman. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yeah, superhero. <laughs> I am Scorpion woman. Um, so he was very good. The, the Scorpion was very good at, at being word at Lambaster. And he he opened a few doors for me in that people got to know who I was yeah. through him. 
Yeah. Uh, both the scorpion and the butterfly look really nice. And I love how you okay. incorporated the spike beads as the... Yeah. How do you call that body part of the scorpion? I don't know, claws, pincers? Pincers? Pincers. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, sting. I love it. Yeah. There are your shaved beads. <laughs> so there, there they are. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but amazing how it keeps the 3D structure and it really is kind yeah. of lifelike. <laughs> yeah, last year we did a, a class called Podcrastination where everybody got to make a, a hollow pod shape. And um, it was really fun because you could make the basic pod and we just covered it in crystals, of course, crystals. Um, but we also went into how you could change the shape and make a pear shape or a ball shape or a long, thin shape. Uh -huh. um, and that was really fun to do because, again, once once you've got the, the basic of the stitch, um, pushing it around to, to make it fit your ideas is really easy. So there we are, a little box that I made for, I think that's in book two, that mm -hmm. one. This, this is like, uh, if I had to choose, like this is one of my favorites from, from all the pictures that you sent oh, me. Maybe. I love it that it's 3D. It has cavachons on all the sides. It's, yeah. it's really nice. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so, it's also possible to like increase, decrease bezel cabochons, uh, make the 3D, 3D structures. And yeah. we have this cute project here that bidders can actually, or bidders can actually yeah. try, right? That's a little beady peeps. That was from International Beading Week uh, a couple of years ago. And it, it's just a very different way of doing a bezel for a Rivoli. And it uses 12 millimeter Rivolis um, and size 11 and size 15 beads. So you don't need much to be able to, to have a go. And that's a free pattern that you can download and play with. Uh, Ginny is asking if this is taught in your books, but I already actually posted the link to the tutorial. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's easy to find. And it's really fun that you can then bead the little figures in the colors of the International Bidding Week as yeah. that's when yeah. it came out. So, And you notice the turquoise and green ones are at the front. Picture. <laughs> of course. And is it, is it, is it like uh, Picasso turquoise maybe? Mm. Or? Yeah, that, that's another gorgeous one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's even better than the ordinary turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we might just be soul sisters here, Erica. Sorry, <laughs> we might just be soul sisters. <laughs> I have a feeling. I have a feeling that turquoise love and with Picasso, especially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and. I have here also a set of beautiful flowers. The petals are also done with Albion stitch. Yeah. The whole thing is just Albion stitch. Yeah. By yeah. The and that's on one of the big um, Swarovski buttons. So that you can just put a brooch back through the the because the the buttons have holes that go sideways at the back yeah so um you can just put your boat brooch back through the hole that's a and good just idea put it on your lapel and off you go <laughs> i think i've got one on my pin board somewhere <laughs> yeah. yeah we have here miriam is loving them and faye <laughs> flowers are popular <laughs> Definitely. And then I have some amazing, uh, these are uh, workshops or kits? This one's a kit. It's one of my mo more recent ones. It's called Christabel. And it's it's kind of fun, the strap. It's like a close-fitting bracelet, like you'd wear a watch. 
So mm -hmm. the strap is all Albion stitch and it's got pearls and crystals in it. And then the little chatons have got little peyote bezels on them. It's look really nice, the four chatons together. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is one of my favorite, favorite. Oh. There isn't very much Albion stitch in there. Um, but the pieces holding the um, the squares, the crystal squares, are done in Albion stitch. Um, and that one's called Crystalline. And it's after one of my favorite Stevie Nicks tracks. Okay. So, yeah, from Fleetwood Mac. So it just kind of picked up the name from there. <laughs> By the way, talking about names, of course, like, the stitch itself, Arbian, it's uh, like kind of the old name or poetic name of England. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. yeah. How did it come to your mind or did you? Uh... Um, I think I just wanted to flag up that it was from a designer in the UK, mm -hmm. but all my friends just pull my leg because we have a football team here called, from Plymouth called Plymouth Albion and they oh, were all like oh are you the football fan <laughs> Plymouth Albion <laughs> and I'm like no <laughs> but yeah it's it's Nate because um Al Albion is um derived from the Latin for white so I, oh, I guess no. it's a very early reference to the white cliffs of Dover Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> and were there any other names in competition when you were thinking about how to name the stitch? It just kind of, I realized I had to give it a name. Um, and, and then that just popped into my head and it just stayed. I didn't have any other names for it. Well, it's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> And mm, two of them. Oh, I have to. I have to show the little owl also. Oh yeah. So the little owl. The only bit of Albion stitch in there is the leaves, but the owl was done as a sampler. And so we've got netting, cubic right angle weave, brick stitch, peyote stitch and Albion stitch all in the one piece <laughs> and um, of, combi of a combination of stitches yeah as many as possible and um I can I don't know if you can just see on his tummy near his uh, foot there is a, a green bead <laughs> yes please explain <laughs> <laughs> it, I should have redone the sample but it just sits there and um and it, it was an accident, but it's kind of fun because, it, again, we've got turquoise and green going on. But, yeah, so I just did him as a very quick little thing, um, and I put it out as a kit. And I have to say that out of all my designs, he has outsold everything else. <laughs> and um, he's been he's in every single country pretty much where beaders are somebody has beaded a little owl oh, wow. and it's absolutely fabulous um but it's also really funny because um you know i do these these much more elaborate complicated things um as an artist and yet everybody knows me before the little owl <laughs> And as the scorpion lady. Also. And the scorpion lady, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Claire, one of our beaters here, she says, I'm working on Heather's Lilibet bracelet at the moment. It's gorgeous and I'm thoroughly enjoying myself. <laughs> oh, thank you, Claire. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and indeed, your, uh, indeed, the O is also in New Zealand. <laughs> and oh that's a good idea um somebody's saying i should put a green bead in every piece of my beadwork and then they'll know i made it oh, yeah, yeah that's a cool idea <laughs> yeah I that could, could be that. your signature <laughs> uh -huh. and 
do we have any questions here for for Heather? Some more questions? Yeah, ask me anything. <laughs> this is a really beautiful possibility to ask a question of someone who actually developed a bead stitch. Like, we don't have so many new stitches that were developed recently. So it's really interesting. It was really interesting to hear how you were thinking about it Thank and you. how it, how it all. Well, the next together. step for Albion Stitch is um, started from when I did the book for Comeback. I started using stitches with three beads at the top, mm -hmm. and I really got into looking at fractal art. Okay, which is um, it, it's kind of. Uh, a very visual and very pretty manifestation of mathematical principles. Um, so there are little piles of scrunched up beadwork here, there and everywhere, which are my attempts to bead some fractals. <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> something will click and uh, that will be the next development for Albion Stitch. Well, actually, Tanya is asking that if there is maybe a book three coming, do you see maybe the fractals or something else as a book could three? Could be. Yeah, could be. <laughs> and that would be beautiful. Fractals are, are inspiring. <laughs> and um, Shirley says, do you consider Albion Stitch to be a beginner-friendly stitch? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, I've I've taught it to many absolute beginner classes for people who've never picked up a bead and thread before. And by if we start at ten by lunchtime, they're all happily beading and experimenting, which is like unheard of for beginners. Um, and that that for me was the most important thing that people could really get fun out of this stitch without worrying, because yeah. it it's very um, user friendly there are very few rules that you have to kind of abide by the only one is that um it just takes a couple of goes to to get used to the thread tension mm -hmm. but once you've got that you're fine yeah and then we have a Miriam says, in the latest magazine of Bead Workers Guild, there is the pattern to make a pretty bracelet of Heather and an article about Erica. Yes, indeed, we were in the Bead Workers Guild journal. Yeah, the there. Pocket Money Princess um, bracelet. That that was, um, I wanted to have a go with the Aurora crystals. And so I used little Aurora flatbacks I think or shuttles one or the other I can't remember I'd have to get the, the book out um but yeah so I've seen a few made and posted on Facebook and they're looking very pretty <laughs> it's such a pleasure for as like as a designer when you when you see the tutorials coming alive absolutely yeah when you know somebody's it, it's almost like um you've you've been invited into somebody's space because they've spent time with your work yeah. and then they're happy with the results and you think yay that's great it's really it's really what it's for yeah yeah it's a it's a great honor when someone chooses the chooses font's design to to invest time into it and yeah yeah, yeah. And then we have a question from Gunnel. Gunnel asks, how do you do a pattern? I mean, from idea to beginning uh, to do it. Like, uh, your pro uh, how is, uh, what is your process to develop? Something? My process. Okay. So my process is um, that I, I usually have a rough idea of something I want to do. So, for example, say I want to make a bracelet. Um so the first start of the process is that I stand in front of the bead cupboards and I pull out things I want to bead with. And then I sit down at the bead board and then just play. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I have a big box of things that didn't. But every now and again, it comes together really nicely. Um, then the other, the other way that I do it is that... I take a lot of photographs when I'm out and about 
not because I want to replicate what I've photographed, but, but it's like the first line of a good novel. Mm -hmm. A great photograph gives you lots of ideas. So I might go through my photo album and, and on my phone. Yeah. What did we do without mobile phones with cameras before? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, and a story will start to grow in my head. And then I'm illustrating that story with, with my beads. And when I do my worksheets, I always give people that story at the beginning of the worksheet. So they know what the inspiration was and what I was thinking when I was creating the piece. That's really nice. And always, um, the other part of my process is that I, I'm doing it for me. So I want to wear the necklace. I want to wear the bracelet. Yeah. And I think if you try and design for other people, it never works. Mm -hmm. So you always have to do it to please yourself first. Yeah. And then, then it works. People kind of latch onto the spirit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, funny story about that. Once I had a beading friend over and she went into my box of finished jewelry and she started to make two piles. And after a while, I noticed she, she told me at the end that these are like, I can feel that your heart is in them. And these others yeah. kind of feel like not, not, not entirely. And she actually made a selection based on like, if I, if I did a design because I started to just play with whatever I wanted to, or a design that a company asked me to do. And then yeah. someone else selected the colors and the shapes for me. And it is an honor and a pleasure when I get to do that, that I design something for another company, but it feels- It's a different process, isn't it? Completely. Yeah. Completely. And does it happen to you that you go back to your old pieces that you put away for a while, that you thought that, no, this is not working, but after a yeah. while? Absolutely, yeah. Um... I might get all those pieces out and just play around and move them around and put one next to another. And sometimes you think, wow, that, was, that would make a really great, and then off you go. Yeah, that happens. And I also occasionally go back, um, I keep all my pieces, my samples from classes and, you know, kit samples. They're, they're in um, those lovely IKEA cardboard boxes with the, the, the little pockets in them. So occasionally I'll get one of those out and think, hey, you no, know, that was a really good idea. I could do this with it now or I could do that with it now. So, yeah, I do go back and revisit things as well. Honestly, though, there's just not enough time in the day to do everything <laughs> that you want to be. <laughs> I think that's the biggest problem of all of us readers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, like, usually I have a feeling that when we start to bid, then even if I have like part of a design ready, there are still like so many choices that are possible to make, still so many possibilities hidden in one design that is just amazing that- Exactly, yeah. What the beading word is yeah. and the beads are keeping for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we have a question here. Mm, Tanya is asking, what sort of thread options would you recommend? Okay, so um, I always say to people when I'm teaching, use the thread you're most comfortable and most familiar with. When you're doing a new piece of beading, you're not familiar with the stitch or the technique then if you're trying to use a new thread as well, it's it's not going to happen. So if you're a fireline girl, then you try and use a soft thread for a piece. Um, you're fighting two battles at the same time. So I always say use the thread you're most familiar with. But for me personally, I use KO, Miyuki and Wonji. And I use all three of them simply because they're so similar anyway. 
you know, in their properties, um, that I get the full spectrum of colours that I might want to play with. Um, I do have Fireline and I do use it, um, but only if I'm making something really big with a lot of crystals in it. So, so I need that kind of of, done by fire, with Fireline, right? Yeah, internal strength. But for most other stuff, I'm I'm using these little bobbins. You know the little. This camera's backwards. The little bobbins that you come look like sewing thread. That's a Miyuki one, turquoise, of course. And those two are Ko. So you know. And I find I can get really really good thread tension with those. But it's also possible to. To do do uh, do Albion stitch with Fireline, then right? It's okay. Yeah, I'm a Fireline girl, so I have to. Do. Okay. <laughs> and then, looking at the questions. Nanofile. I've never worked with Nanofile. Okay. Is my honest answer. And then Tanya is asking, do you prefer Toho, Delica, Ico? Or something else. I'm a Miyuki girl. Mostly because when I started beading, um, that was what the bead stores that I could shop at stocked. So I got used to working with Miyuki. Um, I have to say that my second love is Toho. I really like some of the Toho colours mm -hmm. and finishes. Um, and I have more, more recently been trying to come up with designs that they're interchangeable but because a lot of my stuff is very precise tiny little bezels yeah. you have to stay on brand otherwise yeah. it's just not going to fit so yeah miyuki for me <laughs> and then thank you and then tanya is asking writing the patterns must be such a complicated process do you work with an assistant I wish I could. I so it'd be so lovely. No, I do it all myself. So um, I have a Mac, and I use um, InDesign for the layout and Photo um, Illustrator for my diagrams. And um, it takes takes a long time, and you have to be in the right mood to sit down and write out a pattern. I've discovered. Um, so I tend to leave it. <laughs> especially for classes so it's not your favorite part of the no once i get into it it's it's it is great because you you have to kind of you, you do the written version and you do the diagram well for my worksheets i do written steps and then i illustrate each step with diagrams mm -hmm. um so then it becomes a different challenge in that how do I make this as clear as possible um, and I have to say that traveling to other countries was a huge benefit because um, I've I've learned a lot of how important the visual side of things is um, some of my early patterns are very wordy with very few diagrams but when mm -hmm. I was working with people for whom English is second language or maybe even a third language um, um, we still needed to communicate these complicated little things. I, I became a much more visual writer. Yeah, but it is just me here in my little back bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I had actually two more questions that right. I spotted some little jars behind you. Are those full of jam or full of beads? <laughs> There, that's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's my bead stock. That's all seed beads. Okay. Okay, and they are jam jars. Um, bon maman jam jars. And no, I didn't eat all the jam. You can actually <laughs> buy the empty jars online. <laughs> <laughs> it started that I used the the empties from home, but um, we just couldn't eat the jam fast enough to keep up with the bead shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I buy them um empty ones yeah <laughs> and the cupboard behind me that you can see is is yeah. where all the crystals live oh um, yeah treasury and just just behind my head here is some um, yeah 
I'm trying to work backwards on the camera. So this hand just behind me here, that's a whole bunch of new kits, which Exciting. will go into the shop on Friday. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned that you tra you traveled to teach workshops all around the world. Uh, which countries have you been to? For I've been to um, Holland, Germany, um, France, and in the USA. Yeah. I have high hopes to go to the Antipodes at some point. Australia, New Zealand, that would be so cool. Um, Japan would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but at the moment, who's traveling? I mean, it's just, you know. It's one of those things we look forward to in the future. I, I do have um, a retreat book to teach next year, one in France and one in um, the USA. And I'm hoping that, you know, we, we get our travel system yeah. to the point where you can travel safely. Because so, I, miss, I miss real people. <laughs> I mean, I love Zoom. Zoom's been fantastic. I mean, it was a desperately horrible learning curve to begin with. And my adrenaline level for the first one was just out there because I'm not a tech, I'm not a techie person. Yeah. And um, my, I, I can remember ringing my brother in tears going, I can't do this, I can't do it. And he said, oh, hang on. So he, he um, went online and bought me a little document camera and sent it to me and said, now just plug that in and see what happens. Because <laughs> I was trying to do it with my phone and it, oh, it was awful. So anyway, so the, after the first one, I thought, wow, this is easier than I thought it was going to be. And it's been fantastic because two things. One is I've got to meet a lot more beaders than I could ever physically hope to by traveling. And I've got to meet beaders who can't always get to a class or a show or an event um, for whatever reasons. And the second lovely thing is that once we get chatting, I'm here in my studio. So if we're talking about something, I can go and grab samples from the cupboard. I can grab bead colours. Um, so it becomes a, a much deeper experience in terms of talking about beads than because I couldn't possibly pack all that in my suitcase yeah. to bring with me. So those have been the pluses. Um, the minuses are that it's a different style of teaching. Um, and I've developed different designs to teach online because um, there are just some things that you have to be in person yeah. to wrangle the beads together. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want people to be frustrated at home without being able to communicate what was going wrong and that kind of thing so i've changed that style a bit and the other thing is that for the bead teacher and bear this in mind girls when you're in zoom classes for the bead teacher this is all we see of you exactly and we might occasionally you might occasionally look up and make eye contact <laughs> So for us, a Zoom class is six hours of watching the people's heads, <laughs> which is why I tend to get people talking about other things to do with beading, and then we can get all the stuff out, and we, you know, so it, it becomes a bit of a bead party as well as the design we're trying to bead. Yeah, and so, it's yeah. also mm, I agree with you that it's a different kind of experience teaching from our homes and meeting everyone while everyone is in their homes too. Like it's much more intimate. Oh, so much more intimate. I could tell you stories about um, scantily clad husbands walking behind people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've seen it all. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, and um, the other lovely thing that we get to do is um, pet pet sharing so I've, I've met a lot of dogs and cats via zoom a few parrots and parakeets yeah um, and they're all welcome and they all come and say hello it's really cool uh, I bet you know Tanya's and Katie's uh, burners yeah yeah <laughs> and um so occasionally my cats will just jump up on my desk in the middle of the Zoom class. So all you'll see is this giant tail walk past. 
But for today, we, we fed them early um, so they would settle down and, and not interrupt us. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, just a funny story about other people walking in the background while teaching. Uh, the beading school team grew during the last yeah. last year. So I will not disclose which one of my colleagues was it, but it was her very, very first meet, uh, team meeting with yeah. everyone. And then in the background, we saw her new boyfriend in underwear. <laughs> and she didn't realize, she didn't even disclose it yet so i was like okay so do you have a guest <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so yeah things happen <laughs> and okay. just mm, i will I was, I'm, somebody saying uh, the necklace i'm wearing what i'm wearing is a scar but the necklace is um, the Divine Heart. It's called Divine. And you can make it with or without wings. So the one I have on is one without wings. So, yeah. I love it. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. And, yeah. Uh... Is there anything else that you would maybe... Somebody was you asking would... about Tudor Inspirations. Who is that? Um, did you design the projects together or did you do some of them and then the others designed them? Um, okay, so Tudor Inspirations. Um, we designed separately and then we got together and then went away and designed some more and then got together until we got to a group of designs that we thought would be would be a good fit um, but the one thing we we both because we discussed it a lot we we had um lots of nice meetings um that the designs that we did had to be made out of the separate elements because the whole point was this interchangeable elements um and building the library at the back of the book. So for those of you who don't know the Tudor Inspirations book, I wrote it with Melanie de Miguel. And we, um, at the back of the book is a library of every element that we've used in all the pieces. So it gives you the number of beads you'd need, the type of beads to make one, and then you can do the maths and choose any combination one two five whatever and make your own pieces from the library but you also get the full projects as well and we've gone on to do that we we do um we have a retreat twice a year here in the uk and we've continued with this element principle where um you come to the retreat you get a day and a half with each of us um but you go away with an extension to your library of elements. So you can take half of Mel's and half of mine and put it together in a different way or, you know. And, and that has been super fun. And um, doing the book with Mel, it, it was took us about four years in from start to finish because we, we were both doing other stuff. Um, and then it took each of us about another two years to catch up and get back to where we were before we started working on the book because it's a huge, huge amount of time-consuming work to do. Um, but we are the best of friends now. We talk every week at least, at least once a week um, and uh, really enjoying carrying on working together, doing the retreats and our... Uh, we do it in March and September, and our, our March one is filling up really fast because we've, we've got high hopes of doing it in person, live. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And one, I will read one last question. Okay. And 
We have a question from Thai. When did you start bidding? Did you have a teacher or are you self-taught? Um, I started bidding completely self-taught. I looked at pictures of things in books and thought, oh, you must be able to do that. And my first piece, um, I'd, I'd looked at those crocheted snakes that were made in Turkey, um, which were beaded, but they were crocheted. And of course, I didn't know they were crocheted. It didn't say in the book. So um, I have an approximation of um, peyote stitch. Um, and this beaded snake, I did it with um, gold embroidery thread mm -hmm. and Indian seed beads. So that kind mm -hmm. of dates me a bit. Um, and then I went to... A, friend of mine had a, a needlework store and they started stocking um, delicas and they brought over Fran and Marcy Stone from the USA and they also brought over Sue Jackson and Wendy Hubrick and had like a an event a big weekend um, so I took a class with Sue Jackson and Wendy Hubrick and they were doing their peyote stitch wonder beads and they were the best because they could see how thirsty I was for knowledge. I mean, I was literally sucking their brains out, going, oh, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And one of them took me to one side and, and gave me pretty much an all day tutorial on all the variations of peyote stitch. And that generosity changed my life because I suddenly found this world where I really got what was going on. Um, and absolutely loved it and took it from there but what was super lovely was 10 years later I was a teacher in my own right teaching at bead and button show in the USA wow <laughs> and um, they were doing a class so I signed myself up to take their class um, and just gave gave them my gratitude back because they did change my life yeah so yes i had teachers but yes i was also self-taught um the other people i took classes with i took one with david chat um and and made a little box out of 3d right angle weave um that was great and i also took a class with cynthia rutledge so yeah um not many um, beading classes but enough to to really fall in love with the whole world of beads yeah. well the beads are indeed life-changing i think for many of us definitely and i'm really grateful for beads that thanks to thanks to beads i got to know you heather and yes. thank you so much for joining me today and it was such a pleasure to talk to you also last week when we had our private coffee <laughs> and <laughs> also today's coffee with all the lovely beaters who decided to join us today yeah thank you everybody thanks for those of you who got up super early and thank you for all your questions and for sharing your time with us definitely <laughs> So, ladies, please visit Heather's website. Please check out the Albion Stitch. It's wonderful. There are, as you could see, so many beautiful possibilities. And she loves turquoise, so that's another good reason to <laughs> check out okay. her, her designs. And, Heather, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And I wish you... I will still stay a bit. I have some announcements to make to our readers here, but I would like to wish you a beautiful preparation for the holiday season. Yeah, you too, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. And Bye, thank you. Lots more, lots, of, lots more creative ideas. Okay. Bye. I had her. <laughs> so before I would go. Oh, it was it was really nice talking to talking to Heather and together with you getting to know her better and just some little beady announcements to make before we would say goodbye to each other.
on Friday. I am looking forward to meeting you again. And we can beat together the Hague motif, this little flower that I made using uh, elements from the Starry Night box that many of you have on your beading tables, but I made it from basic bead shapes. So I'm pretty sure that you can join the class. It's a free open class every Friday in the afternoon, the same time as today to make sure that no one has to be alone. The material list is already online, so you can put together your, uh, your selection of colors. And many of you, uh, asked about the extra components. For example, the dragonfly lantern that is hanging from the bottom of this little brooch and the starry night pendant and the crescent moon painting pendant. So our team just uploaded uh, these special components to the, uh, to the website. So they are now available for you. Tomorrow, we are starting our big reading school advent calendar adventure when every day is bringing you a different surprise or gift or a very, very, very nice <laughs> discount to enjoy. And I posted the link if you would like to be part of it. So we are putting together the best of feeding school for you. The ladies actually had to reorganize the treasury to make sure that all the new goodies will fit and they can send them out to you fast if you decide to participate in December. And also, if you have any questions about the calendar, then I'm still here, so I am happy to answer them. Chris, thank you so much. Uh, to ask again, I actually wrote you, also Yvette wrote you today on Facebook that we would need your order number. We can't find it. Can you please get in touch through email info at beadingschool.com? So we have excited readers here. <laughs> Kathy needs a hint for tomorrow that how is the advent calendar starting? I am not going to tell you exactly what is coming tomorrow. I, uh, I can, what I can tell, I will, uh, I will uh, tell you three good reasons to, to sign up for the calendar. One day we will actually have one of the surprises will be 30% discount for glass cabochons. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good reason. Then another reason that I hear some birdies saying that you might get access to old workshop kits from me, which are otherwise not available. And a third reason that many of you are asking, uh, we are working together a lot lately with Ruxandra Puskas, Puskas from uh, Romania, and she's getting inspired by our Starry Night box at the moment. And if you would like to beat something designed by her, then I also recommend it strongly to sign up for the calendar. And Joyce, please send us an email and we will check it for you. Uh, Chris, I don't, uh, I checked it. I don't see, unfortunately, uh, an order coming in from you. So that's why, that's why there is, there is a confusion. And then someone is asking, can we hold our orders to come together in January? At the moment, we are planning to send out the orders once or twice. 
maybe once in the middle of December and then again in January. We might need to do that because if there is a big volume <laughs> that we need to store, then we need to send it out from the treasury so the new ones still fit. But we will be in touch to discuss that. <laughs> And Deb is asking, what time does it start your time? My, my time uh, my time is 3 p.m. in the afternoon, so two hours earlier than our coffee time and our, uh, our no one has to be the law. And Kata says, stop destroying the excitement and asking impatiently for spoiler alert children. The window opens and it will be a nice surprise. <laughs> Thank you, Kata. So those were, exactly, those were my three reasons and three clues to join the Advent Calendar Adventure, and I will not disclose anything else. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you for looking it up. I am looking into it right away. Thank you so much, ladies. So thank you for joining me and Heather today. I am really excited to see you on Friday and looking forward together with you to all the surprises during the Advent season. Wishing you a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.